Hello everybody, and welcome to this very first episode of making our own game with Unity. So in this series, we will be using Unity and Blender to make our very own game, using the skills that we learned in the beginner tutorials. So this game is going to be an unlimited runner game. So without further ado, let's begin. So the project name, I'll call it Unlimited Runner. Whoa! Alright. So let's create the project. All right, so we have made the project. So this is an unlimited runner game. So we have to think, what function does an unlimited runner game have? Well, first off, your character will have a movement that is always conditional, meaning, meaning that your character will always move in some direction without you controlling it. So in most runner games, the character will be moving forward. So what we want to do is make a character and then have a pathway and then have the character always be moving forward in that pathway. So let's begin by making a plane. So right here is the hierarchy. So we'll hit create, 3D object, plane. So here's our plane right here. Let's just scale it a bit, possibly make it longer. So we have like this runway here. So now we'll just make this as our test object 3D object cube okay so here's our cube we'll move it a bit above the plane and we'll move it well actually let's move it here because the X arrow is pointing positive going this way so we will have it look like this so now we have the cube and the plane inside our hierarchy so let's name this let's name these items so the plane We'll call it the runway, and the cube, we'll call it the player. So now what we want to do is, we want this cube to always be moving forward. So what we want to do is make a script with a function that makes it go forward. So to do that, we will go into our project here. The project is where all of your files are stored. So the hierarchy is just where they are inside the editor. The project is the actual files that make up your game. So in project, we'll hit create, C sharp script, and let's call this player movement. So we will edit this script a bit in this episode, but we will keep adding on to the script as we add more to our character movement. So let's drag player movement here onto player so that it applies to the player. So here's our player movement here, and the player movement is in the inspector. One thing that I forgot to mention, in layouts, we're going to switch to 2x3. So we have a 2x3, and here we will switch to one column layout. This is just how I like it. This is what I would recommend to most beginners, but you can do it however you like. So now, we will select the gear in player movement, and we'll hit edit script. And this opens a program called Mono Develop. Okay, so we are in Mono Develop right now. So, what we want to do is move our character forward. So how are we going to do that? Well first, let's go over what these two methods mean. So void start, basically what void start is, when you write code in void start, when the game starts, it calls on that line of code at the very first frame. So if we were to put our movement there, it would only move our block at the start of the game, and that's it. We do not want that. We want to put our code in void update, which is called every single frame. So the block will be infinitely moving throughout the entire game. So that's what we want to do. But first, we have to make a public variable. And we are going to make this variable to control the speed that our block goes. So what we are going to do is type public float speed. And this will determine how fast our block goes. So we will use that code later. So in void update, to move our block forward, we are going to type transform dot translate vector th uh, vector 3 and vector 3 
is an x, y, and z axis, so that's what we're going to use. Dot forward. Now, we don't know if forward is going to be the right direction. We will determine that when we play our game. So forward times speed, so it will multiply it by the speed that we determine in our, pub in our public float variable, times time dot delta time. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So let's test this in Unity. Okay, so we're back in Unity, so let's test this out. So as you can see, a new line appeared in player movement, speed. Currently our speed is zero. So we don't know how fast our character will go. We have to test that when we play the game. So let's just set the speed at one right now. So let's see what happens. So we don't, we don't know yet what direction our character will go. We're going to determine that right now. So let's play the game and see what happens. Okay, so it seems like there are two problems with our game. The first problem is that the character is moving in the wrong direction. So according to Unity, the Unity engine, forward is in the direction of the blue arrow. So what we want to do is make it so that it goes to the right, which is to the direction of the red arrow. The second problem is that our character is not responding to gravity. Our character is currently floating in midair. So here is how we're going to solve this problem. So first, we're going to create a rigid body for our character. So we are going to go in the inspector of our player, we're going to go to add component, physics, rigid body. And as you can see, the use gravity option is checked. So let's play and see what happens. All right, so our character is now falling into the abyss. Yay! That's what's supposed to happen. Well, not really. But now we know that our character has gravity. So now, we have to change the direction of our movement. So let's go back into the script and make it so that it goes right as opposed to forward. Okay, so we are back in mono develop. So what we want to do is change this forward here to right. And let's see if this works. Let's save the script and return to Unity. All right, so we're back in Unity. Let's see if this works. So let's hit play and see. Hooray, it works, but it's, but it's going really slow. That's a problem. So simply all we have to do is change our speed to five or, or four or any number you want. Let's change it to five. Let's see what happens. Okay, a little faster. Okay, let's have some fun. 500. Okay, this is really going to go fast. Okay, 500 is too fast. Let's keep the speed at 10. So let's see what happens when we set it to 10. Okay, that's a bit faster. Obviously our ramp needs to be a bit longer, so what we're going to do is hit the scale option on our ramp and make it longer. And then, and then we'll move it a bit. So now our character has plenty of space to move. Let's hit play and see what happens. Alright, so we have the beginning of our unlimited runner. Cool. So, next up, we have to create obstacles. And to do this, we have to create other 3D objects. And obviously our character will have to have functions that will allow him to move around the obstacles. And that will be covered in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.